so I mentioned that in the learning cluster design model, we have five actions. One of the five is the learn learner to learner differences action. And that's where we actually dive very deeply into creating learner personas. And that's pretty different because normally in our, say if you're using Addy or you're using Sam or you're using your, you know, whatever your favorite L&D methodology is, um, you know, oftentimes we'll have this single target audience in mind, like, oh, hey, I'm creating this for new managers or I'm creating this for high potentials or whatnot. And that's it. Like we might go and talk to some of our learners and try to get some understanding of their needs. But again, there isn't really that step by step okay, how do you actually gather data on your learners and then turn that into ideas for learning assets? Because again, in that world, you're still thinking about creating one thing and cramming everything for everyone into that one thing. So you're not really out there trying to seek differences. So what we actually do in our action, um, and there's there's so much more I could span this because obviously there's a lot to the model, but just as a very high overview, we really try to figure out who do we think is going to contribute the most to our current business objective? So if our business objective is giving continuous feedback and we want to address that with managers, we'll think about, well, who's in that manager pool and how, how might they differ in their life at work, their context, their um, relationship with giving feedback in general to, to then try to hypothesize several different personas that, you know, our initial estimates of, well, I think these folks might struggle the most with this performance gap. Or I think, you know, th these are remote managers, for example. So giving continuous feedback might look differently for them than an in-person manager. So we start to create these hypotheses, and then you, we actually go out and interview that set of learner personas to either sometimes you validate your persona hypothesis, but oftentimes we find surprises, like maybe the remote versus office thing didn't matter that much, but the hours somebody work did, like having core hours versus working all over the place, <laughs> um, that, you know, that might have been it. So we go through a gathering data phase, and then um, from that point, we already start brainstorming, well, this asset would be good for them because they're commuting, this is maybe where they're going to hear the most learning, so on and so forth. So that's just a very brief overview, a very brief example of, of how you might create learner personas.